Did one of the greatest heroes the world has ever known die because of a medical mistake? On July 20th, 1969, the greatest reported viewing audience at the time, a half billion people, tuned in to watch Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong touch down on the moon and utter the immortal words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong later asserted that he had said, one small step for a man. Since then, the audio recordings have undergone extensive analysis with mixed results. If only the omission of a single letter, A, was the most contentious issue surrounding the Apollo 11 lunar landing in 1969. The main debate, though, is unrelated to what Armstrong said or omitted to say when he touched down on the moon. The key point of contention is whether he actually set foot on the moon. Since the 1970s, the hoax moon landing conspiracy has attracted attention from the general public. Was the moon landing faked? Come with us as we investigate the unveiled mysteries of Neil Armstrong, the man who walked on the moon. The Apollo 11 mission was a watershed moment in American and global history. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong descended the lunar module's ladder and set foot on the moon's surface. They were the first humans to set foot on this planet. There was a lot of anticipation for the moon landing. People enjoyed hearing about the event on the news, but it was much more exciting to witness it firsthand. The scientists at NASA found that having visual confirmation of radio communications was really useful. The Apollo 11 mission succeeded in this endeavor by including a camera on the mission, allowing NASA and the world to watch the crew as they prepared for and executed the lunar landing. There were a total of three communications sent to keep Earth updated on the expedition. The actual moon landing broadcast on July 21, 1969 is the most well-known telecast ever. Armstrong and Aldrin were filmed making their way out of the lunar module and onto the moon's surface. The camera was included in the module, eliminating the need for the user to hold it. The camera was removed from the lunar module and set up on a tripod about 30 feet away from it after the two men had landed on the moon's surface. Three locations on Earth were able to receive this footage after it was transmitted down. Goldstone Tracking Station in California as well as its counterparts at Parks Observatory in Australia and Honeysuckle Creek Tracking Station in the United States. These transmissions were subsequently processed for broadcast to televisions around the globe. This transformation was essential since the Apollo astronauts needed specific tools for their space mission. These signals had a very long journey before they finally arrived on people's living room televisions. It simply took a few seconds for this to happen. Thus, NASA and the world witnessed the lunar landing in real time, although with a small delay between filming on the moon and watching on Earth. A 1999 Gallup poll found that 6% of Americans did not believe the moon landing occurred, while 5% were unsure. The percentage may not seem large, but millions of individuals are affected by this. That might amount to millions of people who think the whole Apollo 11 moon landing was staged. Because the moon landing faked conspiracy has so many different variants, no single story or origin can be pinpointed. Many people believe NASA never got to the moon, while others think it happened, but not in the way it was reported to the public. There must be a reason behind the conspiracy if it is to succeed. The growing animosity between the United States and the Soviet Union at the time was the primary impetus for the hoax moon landing. There was a lot of buildup to the space race after the Soviets successfully launched Sputnik, the first Earth satellite. The race to the moon was a manifestation of the struggle for technical dominance on the whole. It was considered the pinnacle of success to land a man on the moon, despite the risks and costs involved. In a speech about the moon mission, JFK underlined that the United States decided to embark on the endeavor precisely because of its difficulty. Boom. Motive. So where exactly did they stage the moon landing? One explanation calls for a massive Hollywood soundstage. Another theory puts the false moon landing at Area 51. No matter where the staging occurred, the consensus among conspiracy theorists is that only NASA provided photographs and what viewers saw on television count. 
In addition, the trust no government agency mindset rejects the idea that humans ever set foot on the moon because there is no independent verification of this event. Over the years, numerous skeptics have made various allegations. A woman from Australia noticed that in the original clip, a Coke bottle can be seen rolling across the screen for a split second. In 2016, an 81-year-old former Hollywood cameraman claimed that he was present during filming of the lunar landing in North London. What's with all the skepticism that the moon landings weren't real? To get Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon in 1969, NASA employed and contracted with over 400,000 people, but it needed only one individual to promote the idea that it was all a fake. Bill Casing was his name. What started as a hunch and intuition eventually became a true conviction. The United States did not have the technological capability to successfully complete a mission to the moon, or at the very least, to the moon and back. As an employee of Rocketdyne, a business that contributed to the creation of the Saturn V rocket engines, Casing made a small but real contribution to the U.S. space program from 1956 to 1963. We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 billion swindle, a pamphlet he self-published in 1976, sought evidence for his conviction through shoddy photocopies and outlandish hypotheses. Somehow, though, he planted seeds that continue to grow in Hollywood films, online message boards, and video blogs. The moon hoax conspiracy theory has flourished since 1969, despite an overwhelming mountain of evidence to the contrary. It is no longer controversial among 9-11's truthers, anti-vaxxers, chemtrails, flat earthers, Holocaust deniers, and Sandy Hook conspiracy theorists that the moon landings were staged. Joe Rogan, the undisputed king of podcasts, is skeptical. And so is Shane Dawson, a popular YouTuber. A New Jersey sociology professor also told his pupils the landings were staged. While Casing used photocopied Samus Dot to warn the world, modern conspiracy theorists have the subreddit R Moon Hoax to document how NASA was so lazy that it used the same moon rover for Apollo 15, 16, and 17. The spark for this came from Casing's initial questions. There are several discrepancies between the photos and reality, including the absence of stars, the lack of a blast crater under the landing module, and the position of the shadows. Experts have squandered countless hours discussing these so-called anomalies, which have to do, variously, with camera exposure periods, the way propulsion operates in a vacuum, and the reflecting characteristics of moon dust. Casing, however, insisted until he died in 2005 that the entire incident was staged and videotaped in a TV studio. It's well documented that NASA was often badly managed and had poor quality control, he said to Wired in 1994. But starting in 1969, we were able to repeatedly send humans into space. With flying colors, it defies all probability after all. At least on that point, he was correct. The United States space program was in its infancy when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 in October 1957, followed by Sputnik 2 a month later, carrying Laika the dog. NASA was established in 1958, and in May 1961, it successfully launched Alan Shepard into space. However, when President John F. Kennedy said that the United States should commit itself to achieve the goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth, many people thought he was crazy. The Apollo 1 launch pad fire, which killed all three astronauts, occurred in the mid-1960 SE, when NASA was spending over 4% of the U.S. federal budget. Meanwhile, the Soviets were achieving more firsts, including the first woman in space, 1963, and the first extravehicular activity, or spacewalk, in 1965. The lunar module was essentially constructed out of tin foil, as anyone who has visited the Science Museum in London would know. As Armstrong put it, adjusting course and landing on the moon was far and away the most complex part of the flight after Apollo 8 had already orbited the moon in 1968. On a scale from 1 to 10, he said, but I thought the lunar descent was probably a 13 inches, despite the difficulties he encountered with the TV cable wrapping around his feet. That is, until you consider how impossible it would be to keep a lie from leaking out of NASA for 50 years. You'd also have to picture NASA having access to special effects technology from the year 2019 back in 1969 and all 600 million TV viewers not noticing a thing. 
If you want to see how bad Hollywood special effects could be in 1968, look no further than Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was far more convenient to shoot on site. Apollo was a watershed moment between the 60s flower power era and the disillusionment of the 70s. One little stride for man, but the first man on the moon was not about to let his accomplishment become a giant leap to international stardom. The Apollo 11 landing in the Pacific marked the start of a mystery. Because of concerns about his loved ones, marital strife, and an inability to trust anyone, the world's most famous man became almost reclusive as a result. James Hansen, whose book First Man was adapted into a 2018 film starring Ryan Gosling, wrote of Armstrong, I've never met somebody exactly like Neil. While many moonwalkers experience profound religious or spiritual awakenings, he remained unmoved by the experience. Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Apollo 11 Command Module pilot Michael Collins embarked on a 38-day goodwill tour around the world in September 1969, called after Armstrong's famous comments. Roughly 100 million people saw them. Armstrong, at the age of 38, had the world at his feet, but he refused to conform to the whims of fame in contrast to Aldrin. His family life, though, did undergo a transformation. His worry extended to his two sons, Mark and Eric. Some speculate that Charles Lindbergh's kidnapping ordeal in 1932, when Lindbergh became the first person to fly solo over the Atlantic, haunted him. Others claimed he was paralyzed by his fear of revealing the truth about the moon landing. The public had very little insight into Armstrong's life prior to the publication of Hansen's book, in which the author enjoyed unusual access to the astronaut. He wouldn't so much as show up to a parade celebrating the moon landing's silver anniversary in his hometown of Wapakoneta, Ohio. He stopped giving them out because he didn't want his fame to be used fraudulently. In 1994, he filed a lawsuit against Hallmark for exploiting his one small step quotation without authorization on greeting cards. Armstrong, who passed away in 2012 at the age of 82, rarely discussed the mission with his loved ones. That's strange, don't you think? There has been no public admission of a hoax by any government or NASA official connected to the Apollo 11 moon landing. In other words, the secret that has been preserved, assuming the hypotheses are correct, is very remarkable. It's understandable that the temptation to disclose such a secret would keep someone up at night. Despite the mountain of contradictory evidence, the conspiracy belief that the moon landings were staged persists. The theory that the landings were staged has been around for almost as long as the events themselves, although it has gained traction in recent decades. A lack of faith in government is likely to blame, while the generation that witnessed the one small step unfold live is now in the minority. Many people have lost faith in U.S. government agencies after being misled on a variety of issues. The idea of faked landings is difficult to disprove because it is rooted in a web of interconnected conspiracies. There are stories that claim no astronaut ever left the planet since the whole effort was staged. In some of the stories, the characters reached lunar orbit but never landed. Still, others say that the moon is round like Earth, making landing there next to impossible. In response to the message, Dr. Carpinetti remarked, Bold of you to assume the moon is real. Refuting a particular version can be like playing whack-a-mole. However, here is a rundown of the issues with the theory that the moon landings were staged in all their six iterations, as most people forget there was more than one. A plot involving only two people can be easily executed. Both parties have plenty to gain from keeping the secret to themselves. And if word gets out, everyone will know exactly who is to blame. Even with a dozen conspirators, catching them all is difficult because someone inevitably has a change of heart, makes a confession under the influence, or mishandles evidence. The Apollo missions, on the other hand, were an unprecedented human achievement. About 400,000 people were working on the project at its peak. If the missions weren't real, it's possible that some of these people wouldn't have cared even though the cost would have increased due to the accuracy required to make spacesuits suitable for the mission. The designers and manufacturers of the suits may have been left under the impression that their efforts would be put to good use. However, tens of thousands of people, including the astronauts, the filmmakers who would have had to manufacture the photographs, and the cleanup crew for the returned command module would have needed to be in on the secret. Most people don't know how many personnel were necessary for each step of the initial expedition. The photographs of Neil Armstrong's steps, for instance, 
are depicted in the film The Dish as being gathered by a crew of four at the park's observatory in Australia. The park's team consisted of around a dozen people, all of whom would have needed to be in on the secret lest they figure out the signal wasn't coming from the moon. The larger park's facility needed even more personnel to be in the know because the moon was too low in the sky for the famous photos to be captured there. Instead, they were captured by a different team at Honeysuckle Creek. There were also backup locations all throughout the world. A total of 840 pounds of lunar soil and rock were brought back from the Apollo missions. Numerous geologists ask for samples for potentially fruitful research projects. However, researchers who request small samples of lunar material and are able to complete their analyses using those samples are more likely to be allowed access and have their findings published than those whose projects require larger samples. These sections have been laser irradiated, reagent reacted, and mass spectrometer analyzed. The results show the rocks have been directly exposed to the solar wind for billions of years, proving they developed in an airless and essentially waterless environment unlike anything on Earth. The rocks would have to be forged in a way that is well beyond the technology available even 50 years ago unless thousands of geologists around the world are in on the deception. Before the landing, it's quite improbable that anyone could have even guessed the composition needed to simulate a moon rock. Even accounting for their geographical differences, the samples returned by China's Chang'e 5 are still a close enough match to suggest they originated from the same astronomical object. It would have been more difficult to fake the rocks than to actually journey to the moon, according to at least one geologist. While the scientific goals of the lunar missions were important, national pride also played a major role. John F. Kennedy, as president, was determined to erase the humiliation of being beaten to the punch by the Soviet Union in both the first satellite and the first man in space. Nothing would have made the Soviets happier than if the United States had failed. To assume they would have remained silent if they had even the slightest indication Apollo 11 didn't land is strange. If the signal was originating from somewhere besides the moon, their radio telescopes would have had ample opportunity to detect it as they followed each mission. The distance from Earth to the moon has been measured with unprecedented accuracy using mirrors left on the lunar surface by three Apollo missions. The ability to deploy them on robot missions was lacking at the time. Some people don't believe the original evidence because NASA's robotic lunar orbiters took pictures of artifacts left behind at each landing location. The number of persons who would need to be in on the conspiracy, however, increased in 2008 when the Japanese Selene spacecraft spotted the blast crater left behind by Apollo 15. American pride would be greatly enhanced by a successful moon landing, but NASA and the federal government were well aware of the possibility of disaster. In the tragic event that both Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were killed on the moon, President Nixon reportedly wrote an acceptance speech. The shame of their deaths pales in comparison to the revelation that hundreds of billions of dollars were wasted on a forgery. How many people would have been crazy enough to go along with it if they knew that the slightest slip up would reveal the truth? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.